Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new on 11 inch tablet pro from Walmart. Now this is the brand new 2023 model on the channel. We've taken a look at a lot of these on tablets in the past, but nothing has really come close to the kind of performance and really overall design of the new 2023 models. So this is the 11 inch version, but they also offer a 10.4 inch version, which does come in a bit cheaper, but these are relatively inexpensive when you compare them to other tablets on the market. The 11 inch pro model we're taking a look at here is coming in at 159. The 10.4 inch is 129, but they both have the same exact CPU. One has a bit more RAM, but performance across the board should be about the same between them. This is running Android 13 out of the box, and it's actually a pretty clean version of Android 13. The only bloat on here was one app. It was the Walmart app, and that's kind of to be expected. I figured we'd have a few more like Voodoo and maybe some games pre-installed, but it's really only the Walmart app and all of the Google apps that, you know, come pre-installed with Android in the first place. Pretty clean operating system here, and it is up to date being Android 13. It's got an 11 inch IPS display, which isn't horrible. It's actually a pretty decent looking display. It's not on par with an OLED or an AMOLED display from Samsung, but given the price here, I wasn't expecting that at all. It's got a resolution of 1200 by 2000. It's got a five megapixel front facing camera and eight megapixel rear. And to my surprise, this is actually constructed of metal. Remember, this is the Pro model, the 11 inch Pro. I have not tested the 10.4 inch, so I'm not exactly sure if it's metal, but it kind of looked exactly the same. This was one of the most surprising things. Usually these are all plastic, super cheap, but the design and overall feel here for the price actually feels pretty premium. USB Type-C for charging the internal battery. It also has dual stereo speakers and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Supports a micro SD card up to one terabyte. We've got our power button, volume rocker, and over here on this side, we've got our other speaker. It would have been nice to see quad speakers on this, but uh, I'm not complaining. It actually sounds pretty decent. Now, when it comes to the overall specs, for the CPU, we've got the MT8781. It's an 8-core ARM SoC, and it's basically the same thing as the MediaTek G99. We've got 6 Cortex-A55 cores at 2 GHz and 2 Cortex-A76 cores at 2.2. For the GPU, it's got the Mali G57MC2 at 850 MHz, 4GB of RAM with the Pro model. If you go with the 10.4, it's going to have 3 gigs of RAM. 128 gigabytes of internal storage, plus we've got that micro SD card slot, an 11 inch IPS display at 1200 by 2000, and they claim up to 16 hours of battery life over on the website. But I'm going to tell you right now, I would not expect 16 hours with the brightness all the way up, volume and everything like that. Maybe in low power mode with the brightness all the way down, you could get 16. But in real world scenarios, I would expect around seven to eight hours of battery life out of this tablet, which really isn't that bad. Overall, it's actually a really snappy tablet, smooth animation, smooth transitions, and like I mentioned, the only other app installed here besides the Google stuff was the Walmart app. It can't be deleted, but it can be disabled, or you could use a third-party application to delete it later on if you need to. We've got full access to Google Play. Of course, it's full Android 13 here, and it doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, but it is AC Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi 5, so you can pick up that 5 gigahertz network. And I have tested a little bit of Xbox cloud gaming with it or cloud streaming. Not bad at all. And by the way, it is running in 64-bit mode, so we can run those 64-bit apps. But there is one major downside here that might be a deal breaker for some people, and that's the Widevine level. We're only level 3 with this tablet at the time of making this video, and if you're not familiar with Widevine, basically it's HD Video DRM for Android, and what you want is level 1. That way, when you load up, let's say, Netflix or HBO, you can do that HD content. With level 3, we can do HD. You're going to get the standard definition stuff, and that's definitely something we see on a lot of cheaper tablets, but I was kind of hoping that this would have Widevine level 1 on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't. When it comes to YouTube, we don't need Widevine. We can actually take it up with the stock YouTube app, or you could use a third-party app if you want to. Here we have a 4K 60fps video running at 1440p. I've got stats for nerds on screen, and we do get some drop frames here. 720, 1080 from YouTube, super smooth, but as soon as I went up to 1440, it did start dropping some frames. Now, to my eye, watching this in 1440p on the tablet, I don't see any kind of skips or anything like that, and you probably won't. But since I have stats for nerds on screen, we can definitely see that it is dropping some of those frames.
Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and the first one here is Geekbench 6. Single core, 738, multi, 1938. And if you're into these Android tablets, you've probably seen that Amazon recently released their Amazon Fire Max 11. I wanted to give you a comparison here in performance, at least with these benchmarks. On that, single core was 946, and multi was 2320. It's not that much of a jump, but as you can see, the Fire Max CPU is more powerful than this On 11 Pro, but the Fire Max 11 base price, 229, and that's with lock screen ads. This is coming in at 159. Next, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. This tests the Vulcan performance of the GPU, 1223, and on the Fire Max 11, we only get a 1099. And the final one I ran was an 2.2. We got a total score of 391,695. And the Fire Max 11 did beat this tablet out in Antutu. On that, we got a 429,495. So with these synthetic benchmarks, they're really not that far off from each other. And in real world performance, when it comes to like gaming, they're going to be right on par with each other. And speaking of gaming, we definitely had to test out some native Android gaming on this thing. First up, we've got Minecraft. We do have fancy graphics on. I believe it's set at about 12 chunks, not super high, but it's really smooth. We've got Bluetooth here, so I do have an Xbox controller connected. You're not gonna have an issue playing Minecraft on this, and I didn't expect we would. Next up, Dead Cells. Not a lot of graphic settings that we can mess around with, but right out of the box, Dead Cells does run pretty smoothly on this tablet. So the way it looks right now, this tablet is going to handle the indie stuff, the clicker game. You know, the easier to run 2D games from Google Play are going to work fine on this. So let's take it up a bit. And we're going to go with Call of Duty Mobile. And this one works great. We're at medium settings, 60 FPS. We've only got a 60 Hertz display here. You could also use a controller if you wanted to. I just grabbed the tablet. I was already set up, ready to go here. And uh, not bad. I mean, you could definitely play this all day long on a tablet like this, but it's a very well optimized game. And we know there are some harder to run Android games that do struggle on lower end hardware, like Genshin Impact. That's the next one we're gonna be testing out. And here it is. With this, I did have to go down to low settings, 30 FPS, and I did try lowest settings, but I really don't like the way it looks on these larger display tablets, really pixelated like that. So 30 FPS low, you could play this. It does work pretty decently. Every once in a while, we got to skip here and there, but you're not going to be able to get a smooth 60 FPS out of this game, even at the lowest settings. Unfortunately, we just don't have enough power here for Genshin Impact, and as a lot of us already know, the developers do spend a lot of time kind of getting iOS right and leave Android in the dust. It's unfortunate, but I guess they're just making more money from iOS. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. And first up, we've got some Dreamcast using the standalone version of ReDream. I am upscaled to 1280 by 960. Really great performance, and we could actually upscale a bit higher. But let's take it up to something that struggles on lower end hardware, and that's going to be PSP with a specific game known as Chains of Olympus. Vulcan back in, 2x resolution, FPS is up in the top left hand corner, getting some decent performance. And if we can do this at 2x, the easier to run games can go up to 4x, but 2x still looks pretty decent. Would have been nice if we could have went up to the native resolution of the screen here, but there's just not enough GPU power. Either way, PSP does work fine on this machine. I also wanted to test out some GameCube with the Dolphin emulator. Vulcan back in, we've got Time Splitters 2, which isn't a super hard game to run, but as you can see, I mean, this is running at 60 FPS, getting some decent performance, and with this machine here, there are a lot of easier to emulate GameCube games that are going to work great, but it doesn't mean that the full library is going to run at full speed, because as soon as I moved over to F-Zero GX, even just on the first track, really fell on its face. I tested this with the Vulcan backend and OpenGL, hoping that one of them would work better than the other, and Vulcan is the way to go, but it's still not playable. And finally, we've got some PS2 using Ether SX2, another one that's going to be really hit or miss. Easier to emulate games like Kingdom Hearts 2, Crash Bandicoot are going to run on this at up to 2x resolution, but with Gran Turismo 4 here, even at 0.75x, we do get some dips, especially when there's lots of cars on track. God of War 2 is just going to be worse. You might even have to drop that down even more. 
Overall, not a bad little tablet. I was actually really impressed by the performance this thing's putting out, given the price. And of course, there are better tablets on the market, but you're just going to pay more money. That's exactly how it goes. You're going to get a better screen, more performance, better sound. But if you're in the market for an inexpensive tablet, then this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Now, you could always go with an Amazon Fire tablet, but you're going to be running Fire OS. This has Android 13. And the 10.4 inch model of the new 2023 on is only $129. Basically, only difference here is it's got a 10.4 inch screen and 3 gigs of RAM instead of 4. But in the end, it's always up to you. If you did like the performance you saw out of this new tablet, I will leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.